be very happy to provide you an extra an extra or two complimentary copies if you have a sibling at home get get a copy for him or her the study guides have been produced not merely for these three days but rather for an extended period of study on this subject and these notes cover much more than what i am going to teach here and there are a couple of pages which i am not going to touch at all the introductory pages which tell you exactly how to use the study guide okay page 10.5 our natural tendency is always towards sin look at this for i know that in me that is in my flesh dwells no good thing is this an unbeliever who is making this statement no the statement comes from saint paul the lion of god the man who saw god face to face the mighty apostle says no good thing is in me but how to perform which is good i find not for the good that i would i would i do not but the evil which i would not that i do since natural human tendency is towards evil since what we want to do we don't do and since what we don't want to do we end up doing those things it is essential for us all the more to spend time with the scripture so that the scripture may give reproof and correction we cannot go back to the the course on which we are walking without correction you all know about space vehicles isn't it even india now hopes to conquer the other planets i'm sure you read all that news with excitement how india which became free just 60 years ago slightly more than 60 years ago how we are gradually growing into a technologically superior nation now one of the phrases that we hear when we read about these space ships is course correction did you ever notice that say course correction missiles also guided missiles also uh, or homing missiles also they have what is known as course correction they need to go on a particular path but often they deviate slightly they can miss the target and therefore at various stages there is an evaluation of where exactly you are and where exactly you were supposed to be and once those computers calculate the deviation rockets are fired in appropriate direction to correct the course and bring it to the right trajectory we the children of god because of the sin nature in in us which keeps on diverting us from the right course we need course correction we need to come back to the trajectory and for that reproof and correction is very essential and reproof and correction would come to us only if the scripture is a regular part if it is a definite part if it is an integrated part of our life so that it pierces deep into our heart and also so that in the light of the scripture we understand exactly where we have deviated and we also understand exactly what course correction has to be done please remember one thing the ultimate aim of the sin nature inside us is to make us sin look at point 6 let us read romans chapter 7 verse 8 romans chapter 7 verse 8 says but sin taking occasion by the by the commandment 
wrought in me all manner of sinful desire if you are having a king james version it has an older word and the meaning is sinful desire okay so sin taking advantage brings in you all manner of sinful desire that's a consequence of sin nature and course correction is essential we also have to understand that trusting merely in our human heart is dangerous there are a lot of people who say that look at this person look at that person look at that person he is not even a christian and what a great contribution that person has made what a great saint that person is i agree that there are a large number of non christians who have done great things great things but then when lo- when the lord looks at those things what does he find he finds that human good is a lot of hay and stubble a lot of grass that shall burn away by fire because the fallen human mind cannot determine what is divine good what we consider as good particularly in the lives of non christians it is good but that is human good you as a child of god are supposed to bring in or produce divine good that is simply not possible using your human thoughts look at jeremiah chapter 17 verses 9 and 10 that's point 7 Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 9 and 10 tell us the heart the mind is deceitful ab- above all things not my words i'm reading the scriptures to you and the scripture says that the human heart is deceitful above all things not only that it says it is desperately wicked why should the scripture add all these adjectives it could have said that it is deceitful and wicked the problem is that the deceitfulness is is so much that the scripture has to add that it is deceitful deceitful above all things and the wickedness is so terrible that the scripture has to add that it is desperately wicked So please remember reproof and correction cannot come from our human nature the human nature the human heart is wicked above everything even the best that the human heart suggests often leads to wickedness friends let me ask you once again you came to this camp this is the third day the second day of intense classes the lord has been speaking to you i as a teacher i know that the scripture has been touching your hearts we teachers all our life we are in the habit of reading faces so when a when a person sits and smiles like this we are able to see through it and when a person is sitting like this still we are able to see through it that deep in his heart he has peace and joy or she has peace and joy okay it's very much obvious to me from your faces that the scripture has been speaking to you it has been touching you and that's the reason why once again i want to ask you what decision are you going to make please remember you as a child of god needs to make needs to give first priority to the scripture 
Are you going to decide today? Are you going to commit yourself the way I committed myself? I was a little late. I regret that. I had to reach BSc first year to come to that commitment. Lord, I am going to spend an hour a day reading and studying your, your word every day. I, I'm, I, I, I tell you, I really regret it. I should have done it much earlier. Because the spiritual decisions that you make, they are your spiritual capital. And the capital, the earlier you, in, you invest it, the greater is the result. I was late. I accepted the Lord as my savior when I was five. But I came to that commitment only when I was about 20. I lost 15 years. Don't be late. Make a commitment. So that the cumulative result would be tremendous. Let me divert for a few minutes. How many of you play chess? Wow, wow, great, great, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. I don't. I deliberately kept myself away from chess because I knew if I become addicted to it, I would not have time in my life for my ministries. If you play chess, there is nothing wrong. See, each person has his own or her priorities. The man who invented chess, he presented it to a king in Arabia. And the king was mighty pleased by th that game. And he said, come on, name your reward. He was a very mighty king. He was an emperor. He said, I am mighty pleased by this game. Name your reward. Exactly what do you want and it shall be given to you. He said, my lord, let a grain of wheat be placed on the first column. There are 64 columns, isn't it? Let a, let a grain of wheat be placed on the first one. Two on the second one. Four on the third one. 8 on the 4th one, 16 on the next one, 32 on the next one, 64.